All right, we have Russ's poem. Someone can read this poem. Russ is now back in Poland, so <laughs> now these poems are coming from Poland. <laughs> now I love my wonderful God today. It will stay like that away. Once that was not true. With Christ Jesus, I was not thing to do. I did not care for his name, and I felt no shame. For him, I had no time. Mm. Didn't know that he was simply sublime, that he was righteous too. With that, I wanted nothing to do. And his holiness for my husband, my simple ways did not attain. <laughs> On glorious day, I saw the light. I did not what I did what was right. All my sins I did repent. A gift God sent. Then I bow low. His lordship to know. Now I follow him each day. <coughs> I take time to eat and pray. Peace with God is now mine. As I am filled with amazement divine. Oh. Amen. Amen. As I'm filled with amazement divine. Amen. That's an amazing poem. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Like everything else is poem. That's just the message. Right? He um, said that, that for him I had no time, didn't know that he was simply sublime, that he is righteous too, that I wanted nothing to do. Mm -hmm. That his holiness burned like a flame. My simple way to wait without pain. But anyway. We're going to be talking about part of the message today will be about that fire burning within us. So, at the power of the uh, controlling the PowerPoint. <laughs> I've never had that too much before. Thanks. <laughs> well, let's begin with some uh, prayer. Again, Father, we do thank you again this morning that uh, we have this opportunity and joy and just feel uh, so grateful to you that you were willing to become the Lamb of God, to die on the cross and to pay the price for our sins. But, and Lord, there was a time that none of us desired you. We didn't want what you had. We didn't want, we wanted what the world had, but Praise God, your light shined into our hearts and changed us. What a glorious light. Caused us to repent and consider you as our Lord. Amen. So this morning as we fellowship this morning in your word, I just pray that the word would speak as you wanted to speak again. Lord, I trust in the speaking of the Holy Spirit in each brother and sister and my heart and all the hearts of us here. Those who might hear this message on Zoom or listen to it um, on the website, Lord, is that your word would open us more and more to you. Thank you, Lord. I pray this in your precious name. Amen. 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 So, again, I borrowing. Thank you, Bruce. I'm borrowing your, your, your title. Caring for God's testimony. Amen. You know, what we mean by the word testimony is that God has a desire to be expressed through his humanity. And this was his beginning, right, when he created Adam and Eve. His desire was to have a cooperation, a fellowship, <laughs> a co-working with Adam and Eve on this earth to subdue the earth, to control the earth, to um, for man to have a relationship with God, eat of him, partake of him, take God as his life. And so this would be the testimony, right? That they walk expressing all the very divine nature of God, everything God can be seen in creation, can be seen through humanity. And of course, we know sin came in and changed all that, but the Lord still is caring for God's testimony. And it says this return to him, to return to me. And I will return to you. Amen. So this morning we are going to be covering Malachi chapter 3. Re press the button. Oh, sorry. I think you have it. You have it all 
oh, I say, look at that. That's, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's like, got me different than I thought. Okay. Um, I think it's it's good again. That is, anybody who's got their Bible here? Yep. <laughs> we need three brothers or sisters if you can read loud to read through Malachi chapter 3. I think it's good to read the word publicly. Mm -hmm. So, if anybody has something in volunteer, the first one could be Malachi chapter 3, 1 through 6. Malachi 3, 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. Verse 2. But who shall abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like a fuller soap. Mm -hmm. Read. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Amen. Or, then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord, Amen. as in the days of old, and as in the former years. Five. And I will come near to you, to you judgment, and I will be a swift witness Amen. against the sorcerers, Amen. and against the adulterers, and against the false swearers, and against those that oppose the hireling in his wages. The widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. Six, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Amen. Amen. Seven through twelve. From the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes, and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. What you say, how shall we return? Mm. Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. Mm. What you say, how have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. So that there may be food in my house. Amen. And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. Hmm. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven. Amen. And pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Amen. Then I will rebuke the devourer for you. So that it will not destroy the fruits of the ground. Nor will your vine in the field cast its grape, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. All the nations will call you blessed. Amen. For you shall be a delightful land, says Amen. the Lord of hosts. Did I say through 12? Yeah. Yeah, you said through 12. All right, so next someone can read 13 to the end, 13 through 18. I'll read. Yeah. 13. Your words have been stout against me, saith Jehovah. Mm. Yet ye say, what have we spoken against thee? Ye have said, it's vain to serve God. Oh. And what profit is it that we have kept his charge, mm -hmm. and that we walk mournfully before Jehovah of hosts? And now we call the proud happy, yea, they that work wickedness are built up. Mm -hmm. Yea, they tempt God and escape. Then they fear Jehovah spoke one with another, and Jehovah hearkened and heard, and a book of remembrance was written before him. For them that feared Jehovah and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith Jehovah of hosts, even Amen. my own possession, in the day that I made. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son Amen. that serveth him. Amen. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Kind of the conclusion of Malachi 3 is a wonderful. Mm -hmm. especially verses 16 through 17. Mm -hmm. So Malachi begins by the coming of two messengers. But we're going to read a verse. This is a verse from Malachi chapter 2. This is the last verse in chapter 2. Um, this is about being weary in the Lord. 
So it says, uh, Have you wearied the Lord with your words? And you say, How have you wearied him? But well, we didn't do that. What are you talking about? <laughs> and in that you say, and this is what God is telling you through Malachi, you said, Everyone who does evil is good. Mm. Wow. Have we heard that in these days? <laughs> Everyone is calling evil good and the good evil. So we're living in the days of Malachi in a sense. So everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delights in them. Oh my goodness. Or where is the God of justice? So this is good two good things. First of all, there is a large group of people at the time of Malachi speaking, what are we doing wrong, right? Right? We're not we're not wearing you. We, you come on, we didn't do anything wrong. You say, well, well, what is evil? It's good. It's okay. If it feels good, let's do it, right? If I think it's right, let's do it. Let's make a uh, proposal, right? Let's make an executive order. But it's evil, we're going to make it good just because somebody says it is, right? We hear this today. But then there should be another good people, group of people say, where is the God of justice, mm -hmm. right? In a sense, they're saying, where is God's justice? But we're also asking, Lord, where are you? Mm -hmm. This is why the next verse is mm -hmm. wonderful, right? Listen to the first word in chapter 3, verse 1. Behold! Amen. <laughs> they ask the question, should we count good as evil? Where is the God of justice? Right away, Malachi, God through Malachi says, Behold, I am sending my messenger. And he will clear away before me. And the Lord, whom you are seeking, will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of armies, or the Lord of hosts. So we begin to see that Malachi begins to prophesy again about somebody's coming. Actually, two messengers. This is the title, right? The coming of two messengers. Malachi 3 and 1 again says, Behold, I am sending my messenger, and he will clear away before me. Who is that messenger? Anybody have any thoughts? Yes. <laughs> it's John the Baptist. What was John the Baptist's job? His job was to make clear the path of the Lord. Right? To make straight the path of the Lord. And then it says also, there's someone else coming, another messenger. And the Lord, whom you are seeking, will suddenly come to his temple. All of a sudden, you're looking for salvation. You need salvation. You need something to change. So God has not forgotten. He's going to send a messenger. And this messenger will be John the Baptist. He's sending another one. Who is the second messenger? It's his beloved son in whom he is well pleased. It's our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the prophecy. It says in Matthew 3 1. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So this is a cross-reference to, to Isaiah, and where he's promised that someday someone's going to make straight the path. So we know the first messenger is John the Baptist. Remember how chapter 2 ended. Where is the God of justice? Right? So you have this group of people. I think Steve gave a good uh, sharing, and then Bruce last week, the, how poor the condition yeah. of the children of Israel at this time. Again, we're not quite sure when Malachi was written, but we do know it's after Ezra and Nehemiah. And when we read Ezra and Nehemiah, we've seen the people bounce back and forth. Right? For a while, they're very good, then all of a sudden they get mixed marriages. They're very good, but they're not taking care of their temple. 
they're very good. At the end of uh, Nehemiah, Sam Ballas moved into the temple, or mm -hmm. Tobias moved into the temple. <laughs> he he's, shouldn't be there. They moved all the treasure out of the temple to make room for him, right? Mm -hmm. Things are not good. They keep bouncing back. So here we are again, Malachi. And this is the last, you have to understand, this is the last prophet that's going to speak in the Old Testament. You know, the way the books are in the Old Testament, it's not like Isaiah, some spoke before others, and it's moved around the Malachi. The last book of the Old Testament is the last prophet. Do you know from Malachi to Matthew chapter 1 is about 430 years. So all this time from Genesis <laughs> all the way to Malachi, God is speaking. He's speaking through Moses. He's speaking through Elijah. He's speaking through Elisha. Right? He's speaking through all the judges. Right? He's speaking through Isaiah, Jeremiah, Zechariah, Haggai. Right? Nehemiah, Ezra. He's speaking a lot. And he gives us a history of the people. Now we come to Malachi, and all of a sudden, for 430 years, God is silent. No more prophets. No more speaking. <laughs> so we have to pay attention. What is the last thing he's talking about? He's talking about correcting all the problems that lie within humanity. All the people who say they are servants of God, and how they're bringing offerings that are not proper offerings, right? They're blind sheep, or sheep that have blemishes. They don't want them. And what are they doing? They're bringing them to God's temple, and they're keeping the best for themselves, right? You can't say they're not bringing offering. Right? You can't say they're not offering something, right? <laughs> but they're not offering the best. They're not offering the top fruit, right? Today, as Christians, are we bringing God's best? Are we bringing what God has given us in the way of whether it be finances, money? But it's not, again, the money that really is a matter, whether it's little or a lot. As Paul said in Philippians, it's not the finances. It's what God has done in your heart that causes you to offer. But are we giving our best? Are we giving our all? All on the altar do we give to the Lord? I surrender all. Are we surrendering the best to the Lord? So I think it's a it's a, a marvelous thing, and you can understand why John the Baptist came and what is his first words? Repent. Mm -hmm. Repent and be baptized. Mm -hmm. Right? Later it says for the remission of your sins. Mm -hmm. Voice in the wilderness, the way that leads to the Messiah. God said. I am coming as the judge. And if you want to no longer be those people who don't serve properly, who don't care for the Lord's interests, who don't care for what God is doing, the only answer is that you repent. You need a 180 degree return. And you need to be terminated, that old nature. You need to be baptized. You need to be put under the water in order that what? This new messenger can be released. This new messenger can be born. This new messenger can be the message of the true God, the God who comes to give life, the God who comes to judge, the God who comes to sanctify and work this life within us that we can live the life that uh, be his. Then the next messenger says this. It's a refiner's fire. You know, when I was reading this, I was thinking about it, considering it, and I didn't, I, I, I read the verses saying he's coming as like a refiner's fire, a launder or so, um, as it says here. It's, but who can endure the day of his coming? What? What do you mean endure the day of his coming? Jesus came as this little lamb, the lamb of God, soft spoke, so sweet. Well, yes, he is sweet. I don't know if he was soft-spoken because, <laughs> because he, it's not like here. We have to use a microphone, right? Can you imagine Jesus standing, speaking yeah. to 5,000 men, maybe 10,000 people? He didn't have a microphone. He had to really have a voice. 
voice that people could hear. We had to have a voice that carried. So he didn't come. But we always look at Jesus. Oh, Lord, you're just, oh, you're the shepherd. You love me. Yes, he loves you. Yes, thank you, Lord. You died for my sins. Yes, he did die for our sins. Yes, that's why he came. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. But here in Malachi, it's giving a little bit different sight. It says, he can endure the day of his coming. And who can stand when he appears? You think, well, what is this? Is this something fearful? Some, uh, some king going to come and put down the rule and bring the armies in and kill everybody? Right. What should we endure? What should we, what should we uh, be stand for? Because it says, for he is like a refiner's fire and like a launderer's soap. Yes, Jim? Yeah. Verse 3, and he will sit as a smelter and a purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, so that they may present to the Lord offerings in righteousness. What was the problem in Malachi? Were they offering offerings in righteousness? Yeah, probably the Who was? Of the priests. According priest to Malachi 2, they weren't. Right. Malachi 2, they were offering sheep that were blind. Right. 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 So they weren't offering in righteousness. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> My point is in Malachi, they were not serving. No. Yeah. They were not serving properly. No. They were married to foreign wives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were not bringing, you'll see here, they were not bringing the ties anymore. They were not bringing the best. They were not bringing the top. They slid back into caring for themselves, right? So here it says, this messenger is going to do something different. He's going to be like a refiner's fire. He's going to be like a longer soap. We'll get into this. This is not something bad. <laughs> this is not something of destruction. This is something of sanctification. And he will sit as a smelter and a purifier sober. I don't know, Don, when you did demo team, did you make your own gold or did you, or you had somebody do it for you for the fillings? Well, we Purify did it at school. And, and school you did your own. And I had a lab technician that I thought to do. But my point being is things had to be purified, right? Right. The metal right. had to be smelt. Everything had to be turned out. With. That's what this says. He will sit as a smelter and a purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi. Um, Spurgeon said about this verse, he said, it says he will sit. He said he could imagine um, the smelter sitting down, you know, there's this big furnace and he's sitting down there and he's he's got the gold or the silver in there and he's he keeps looking in and he's watching and he sees that he's right and he's watching these fumes, these things coming off, these things flying off that are not pure. Because he's sitting there watching. He's not watching to see if that silver and gold would be consumed. He's watching that that silver and gold would be purified. That it could be made as an offering of righteousness to God. Right? Paul declares in 1 Corinthians 13, Those who are building the church do not bring wood hand stubble, but build with gold, silver, and precious stones. How is it proven? will be tested by fire. Right? So this is what this is talking about. He's a purifier of, the, of his things. That's amazing that they may present the Lord offerings of righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in the former years. So they're remembering back there was one time when the offerings were good. Right? When the offerings were honor, honoring the Lord, they were burnt offerings. They were sweet-smelling savors to God. This is what God is looking for. He's looking for those who are living a life that is pleasing to him, that have been through the fire, who have been refined, who have now become gold and silver. They become the priests. They become the leaders. They become the saints who minister to one another in a purified way. This is a former day. This is from Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. This is John the Baptist. 
he says, this is in the same section where he ministered, repent, be baptized. And then John the Baptist, it says, indeed, I baptize you indeed with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. This is the New Testament, okay? <laughs> you know, we like to look at this. We like to look at the fire as he's going to cause my heart to be burning. The gospel is going to be burning. No doubt that that is the case. Even Jesus mentioned, I came here not to be pleasing, but to cast fire on the earth, right? Well, on one hand, it is the fire of the gospel. But it's also, you know, Jesus was born in the midst of, in Jerusalem, while well, he was brought to Jerusalem, in the midst of Jerusalem, being under the slavery of the authority of the Roman Empire. He was born in the place where the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the people were not really caring for God's temple. They were doing the things, but they would do things to be seen. They were not, they were saying you should do this, but the Pharisees were living in a different way, but they were putting all these heavy weights upon the people. Things were not as they were supposed to be. But here we see this Jesus, whom we love, he came to baptize with the Holy Spirit. Thank him for that. <laughs> Thank the Lord <laughs> that one day he poured out the Holy Spirit, but also with fire. So this coming, these two messengers are coming in a particular way. And Jesus is coming in a way that, yes, again, praise the Lord. He is the Lamb of God. We just celebrate the Lord's table. We just look the price our Lord Jesus paid for my sins and for your sins. We just consider how much he loved us, how much the Father loved us. With a great love, he loved us that he would send his only son to pay for the price of our sins. Our iniquities, everything we thought, everything we did, everything we were going to do was paid on the cross through the precious blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for that. That was only the beginning, right? The beginning was when he resurrected and he ascended, says the Father gave him the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit would be poured out from Jesus to upon his people. And the Holy Spirit was sent, one hand, to empower the apostles to preach the gospel, but also the Holy Spirit was sent to do what? The sanctifying work, transforming work that, it, that God's people need to become righteous. So, what does the word say? Does the refiner fire be came? This is from 1 Peter 1 6. In this you greatly rejoice. Uh, Ted, this is one of your favorite verses, right? In this you read greatly to Joseph, though for now for a little time, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. <laughs> that always mentions this. Rejoice? <laughs> Do we really rejoice over grievous trials? <laughs> Are we really happy when grievous trials come? In a sense, rejoicing. Rejoicing is not, you know, you're jumping up and down. There's a rejoicing that's deep within you. If need be, you have been grieved by various trials. That the genuineness, why are you being grieved? Why are you being tried? Why is this trials coming, these trials coming? This is the answer. That the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory with the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whom oh, having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you joy, rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith is what? The salvation of your souls. Amen. This is where I'm spending a little bit of time. We have some other verses to read after this, but consider this. Remember, it says, this second messenger is going to come as a refiner's fire. Again, we talked about a refiner, a smelter. His whole goal is not to consume the product, but to purify the product. Yeah. His whole goal is a fuller soap, 
or a cleaner, right? Those who does the cleaning, what's it? What's the word I use? Some say polar soap. Laundry soap. Yeah, it's laundry soap, right? It's for cleaning, right? <laughs> Paul uses this very well in Ephesians chapter five. It says, "The Lord Jesus, the bride, He loved the Lord church so much, He gave Himself up for her, <clears throat> that He might wash wash her through the water of the Word, from every spot, wrinkle, and such things." When Jesus came to his people, he came to them to be married to them, that they would be his bride. This is, was his hope with Jerusalem, with, with Israel, that they would, he would be their husband, they would be his wife, right? But there was a lot of impurities. Today, the church is looking to be the bride of Christ. We're longing to be the bride of Christ. And yet, the Lord is still doing some laundry work. <laughs> We're still in the laundry room, right? Your sisters... Barb yesterday was doing a lot of laundry. I know that you don't want to be stuck in the laundry room. <laughs> we have automatic machines now, but it's a good thing, right? We have a laundry room because I'm wearing clean clothes, right? <laughs> These have been washed, right? I'm wearing clean clothes. Revelation declares that right and made herself ready. How has she done that? Through the water of the word. <laughs> Spending time in this Bible. Amen. But not just the word of God in the sense of black and white, but the word as it's conveyed by the Holy Spirit, the truth that's spoken in here, the enlightenment that comes from here, the reproof that comes from the word of God, the exhortation that comes from the word of God. The Bible Paul says this is the washing, the cleaning from the spot of the bride, every spot, every wrinkle, right? Most brides, I never was a bride, but I have one. <laughs> Right, I am. Well, I am going to be a bride, praise the Lord. But before the, you know, when they're getting ready, they make sure there's no spots and wrinkles. They make sure the dress is dressed properly because they want to be properly prepared for their savings. Well, the Lord is as a fuller soul. Mm. He came to wash us, to cleanse us through His Word. Thank God He gave us His Word. And not only that, He is also the one who does what. The genuineness of faith. So the Lord needs to not prove our faith. It's just, is it genuine? Is it working in you? Is it really alive? And he does this by various trials. He does this by testing it by fire. When trials come upon us, when difficulties arise to us, they bring us to know in a deeper way who God is. They tell us who we are. I believe the work of the Spirit is always this work. Before you were saved, First Peter says the Spirit was sanctifying you unto the believing in the redemption of Christ. I think this was your experience, Steve Miller, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you didn't know it, but through some prayer, somehow, maybe, whatever it was, the Spirit sanctified you to walk into this church, find a track, meet Yuri, right? Go to go to Case Western Reserve University. You thought, oh, those were your choices. <laughs> In my hand, maybe they, you were making the choice, but the Holy Spirit used them mm -hmm. to bring you to salvation. Each one of you think about this, how you were saved. Right, Brother Ted? Play a piano for a church where you were not a believer? Mm -hmm. right. And yet you were impressed by how those people lived. And then you became a believer. Just right. one by one, we could... We should have a testimony time again. It's been a long time since we share how many of us became Christians. Mm -hmm. But my point is, the Lord worked, sanctified, separated. He's doing the same today. He's a fuller soap, testing our faith, proving our faith, that our faith, the faith you have is more precious than gold. Trust the faith. Trust in the Word of God. Trust in your belief. The more you go through these things, you need to pray, Lord, Take me through this. May I know you more through this. Many times I was going through many trials and difficulties. You know, at first, when this is especially when Barb began to have some difficulty with uh, postpartum depression and those kind of things, um, my first thought was, well, this must be just the devil. Mm -hmm. The demon's coming in to bring in this kind of thing. Well, mm -hmm. certainly the devil might have been trying to use it, but Eventually, I began to learn uh, all things work together for good. Not all things are easy. Not all things are simple. 
but they are trials. Mm -hmm. And it was through that trial that with Barb and I went through, and that many, many of you know other trials we went through, and many trials you don't know that we went through, or I've gone through, they have been proven. But purify the gold. Okay. We sang this song this morning, burn, burn, a love within my heart. Burn fiercely night and day. I thought I had that burning, I had that burning, I believe I did. But then it says, till all the dross of earthly love is burned and burned away. Each one of us has some dross that we love. There's things of this world we love. There's things that we think about. There's things we lay hold of. But God loves us so much. Jesus and the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit loves us so much, he wants to have a real, pure, righteous relationship with us. So he begins to try and test us. And what I thought was probably the enemy coming in was actually the Lord coming in to do some purifying work, mm -hmm. right? He was refining. But listen to this. So that we may be found praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen to that phrase. Listen to what happened before. We're tested by fire, right? And don't you love this phrase? That we may be found. You may be found. I may be found. All believers could be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I don't know. I could almost just stop here and let's say, let's just have some testimony and fellowship because what a high honor. Us lowly, Christ, uh, lowly sinners, we poor sinners, we sinners who have no hope, right? Maybe we could have testimonies from our wives how their husbands <laughs> are, right? <laughs> I, I shared this many times before with, uh, with Barb. I don't remember. I remember exactly. It was, we're in the car. I don't know what I, don't know what I said, but, you know, I, I, I never joke. I never say anything that's fine, which, which is not true. I just lied. <laughs> but I joke. But I said something. And I remember Barb sitting next to me, and she looked at me and said, and you're an elder in the church? <laughs> that wasn't praise. That wasn't glory. She was saying, "You're an elder. What are you acting like that for? What are you saying that for?" I, it wasn't something really evil or anything, but that was her statement. She said, probably said it a few times, right? <laughs> At least to herself. <laughs> yeah, probably. You know, she probably had a right to say that. She probably wasn't wrong. But listen to this. One day, if each of us allow the fire to prove us and test us. If we through, I think the song mentioned you got God through the Holy Spirit does this work in us. But we need to present ourselves, right? Romans 12 says, present yourselves a living sacrifice. God is not going to force you to be what you don't want to be. But he is there to urge and to encourage. So we need to learn to present ourselves in this matter. But then we can be found. When the Lord returns, couldn't it be found to say, wow, praise I and glory has been seen in this brother, this sister, because this refiner's fire, this fuller soap, has done the work that has come to do. Thank you, Lord. And one more section from First Peter. I'm going to put them all up there. Oh, let's take this back. I didn't leave that there. You guys will read that and not pay attention to it. <laughs> At least Steve will. <laughs> All right, this is from 1 Peter 4. Seems to me that Peter learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, Peter was at the refiner. He was one of the first people to meet the refiner. Mm -hmm. Right? And he had big failures. He had big troubles. He denied the Lord. Right? But the Holy Spirit used him in Acts, and he became a different person. So he had this experience. Again, Peter says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning fiery trial. Right? Don't think it's strange. Why do you think it's strange when fiery trials come upon you? Do we declare, Lord, I'm a Christian. Right? I believed in you. Why would you ask me to suffer through this? Why would you bring in this? Why that? Why this? Right? Right? We forget verses like, if you, if because I was per persecuted, you will be per persecuted. Right? If you honor my name, you will be persecuted because of my name. But don't think it's strange. 
Fire trials, which is to, is to try you as through some strange things happening to you. What? Is this strange? No, it's God's love. <laughs> but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. The reason I bring these verses in here is to help us to realize and encourage us and incite us to fight on and be persevering mm. and endure mm. to the end, mm. right? In order that God can do the work that he can have as believers, that he will gain what he wants through us unto his glory and unto his praise. And it's because he loves us. And this is a, uh, a quote from a Spurgeon. Uh, Steve, I know you like Spurgeon because you've been putting a lot of quotes on yeah. Facebook from Spurgeon. Can you read this yeah. for us? If any of you, my hearers, are seeking the Lord at this time, I want you to understand what it means. You are seeking a fire which will test you wow. and consume much which has been dear to you. Mm -hmm. We are not to expect Christ to come and save us in our sins. He will come and save us from our sins. Amen. Therefore, if you are enabled by faith to take Christ as your Savior, remember that you take him as the purger and the purifier. For it is from sin that he saves us. No. Uh -huh. Spurgeon was known as a gospel preacher, right? How would you like to come to this gospel meeting? Right? <laughs> it would be convicted. Yeah, because he said, if any of you might hear, so he's, he must be preaching the gospel, it must be a gospel message time or something, because he said, if any of my heirs are seeking the Lord at this time, if you want to come to Jesus and be your Savior, um, let me tell you, if you believe in Jesus, he'll take care of all your problems. You'll have no more headaches. Everything will be wonderful, right? That's not what he said, right? That's the gospel that's preached many times now, right? Don't worry about it. Jesus will take care of all your problems. No more problems. Well, sorry to say, the Jesus that I met, <laughs> didn't, he didn't take care of the problem of sin. He didn't take care of the problem of my flesh and the world by dying on the cross. He did take care of all those problems. I cannot do anything about those. He did. But he also came, as he said, I want you to understand that it means you are seeking a fire which will test you and consume much what has been dear to you. Isn't that something? <laughs> I was, I, there's a story told by about Watchman Nee that he was invited to a college campus to uh, preach the gospel. And he wrote back to the, the students there. He said, if you want me to come to preach the gospel you, to you, you, you have to be ready to give up everything of your life to follow Jesus. Mm. Otherwise, I'm not going to come. Mm. Huh. This is what Spurgeon is saying. Right? This is the message. Now, don't forget, we do share the gospel of good news. <laughs> but the good news includes the Lord's full salvation. His full salvation. This is a wonderful thing. So, these are words of encouragement to us. He came not to save us in our sins, but to save us from our sins. Amen. So, therefore, he is the perjurer and the purifier. Um, let's see how far we should go here. <laughs> I have a lot more, so. Anyway, let's look at this. I, the Lord, do not change. So this is the Lord again speaking through, Haggai, through Malachi to the children of Israel. He says that I will come near to you for judgment. And I will be swift witness against the sorcerers, the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, those who oppress the wage earner, and his wages are the widow of the orphan, and those who return away the stranger from justice and do not fear me, says the Lord of armies, or the Lord of hosts. For I, the Lord, do not change. 
Therefore, you, the sons of Jacob, have not come to an end. So this part is just a reminder. He says he's coming again to judge. And he's going to judge all the evil of this world. So, brothers and sisters, there is a lot of evil that's coming out much more, more, more and more. And sorcery, <laughs> you know that uh, I, I heard on the news the other day that witchcraft has now become a profession. Wow. It's not just something that people do, but it's not a recognized profession. <laughs> sorcery, right? What's that? I don't know. If you hire them, they now have wages up to $100, $200 an hour. <laughs> and just, I'm just bringing this out. I can't spend too much time on this. But recently, I also heard, and I mentioned it the other day, at some, some churches, I don't think it's a, a fundamental evangelical church, a new age church, but it's called church, and people look at it as considered part of Christianity. They just hired a um, person who does seances and who does can read for cards and see the future and talks to the dead. They hired her as a pastor to be their grieving counselor. And she said, this is a gift that's been given to her by God. And she says, the Bible says, every gift comes from above. And she is there to bring the Greek people, and she will help them talk to their deceased. So, but says, I will come near for judgment. I will be swift. Mm. We, we, you know, we get discouraged by this. We need to pray for this, but we also need to know the Lord is going to come and clear the whole thing up. In Revelation, it talks about, he deals with all the sorcerers, mm. evil, and eventually they will be cast into the lake of fire. We just need... Yes, we just need for us to pay attention to the Lord's work in us. And the Lord says this in verse 6, For I, the Lord, do not change. He doesn't change. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. Remember in the first part of Malachi, he said, You ask, how do you love me? He says, I love you, right? I love you, but I also judge you, right? Look at the history of the children of Israel for the Old Testament. You do this, you're blessed. You do this, you're cursed. He loved them. He cursed them, but he did not destroy them. That's what he said. You, the sons of Jacob, have not come to an end. You would think the Lord would say, that's it. This is ridiculous. I, I, I'm just going to find another group of people. I'm just going to find someone else. Well, in a sense, he did. He came to the Gentiles, right? And he did offer himself. But he still came to be born as a Jew, to come to his people. And to give them the word, I need to bring the gospel to my people, to the people of Israel. Eventually, at the end of Revelation, we know he will rescue even Israel, even the Jews. And they will become priests and kings to God again in the temple. He loves them. He's not going to change. He's still judging, but he's also still loving, and he has not destroyed them. And this is a wonderful thing. This is from Proverbs. This is also quoted in Hebrews chapter 12, Proverbs 3, 12. Uh, John, can you read this and read it loud? Proverbs 3, 12. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, just as a father disciplines the son in whom he delights. Amen. <laughs> Who does the Lord discipline? Exactly. Those he loves. Yes. Right? <laughs> Hebrews also said, if he does not discipline you, it means you're an illegitimate son. But he knows he loves, he disciplines. He cares for them. Because there's a verse in that same section about being disciplined because he loves you. It says, without holiness or without sanctification, no one will see God. Do you want to see God? Do you want to see the Lord? Do you want to see the Lord with honor, praise, and glory? Yeah. We say amen to that. Is your all given to Jesus? <laughs> Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Praise God. Let him, let the fiery trials work. Let the things work. What do you think? Let's see where we are. 
All right, the next section is return to me and I'll return to you. Um, so this section is talking again about a problem that's going on within um, Jerusalem among the people. Um, this is from the days of your fathers, you have turned away from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of armies. But you say, how shall we return? Again, do you see the love of the Lord? <laughs> the love of God? He says, return to me. Come back. Right? What was the first speaking of John the Baptist? Repent. Turn away and return to the Father. Return to God. Right? This is what Jesus promised. I will come to you. But of course they said, well, how shall we return? This is to me is an interesting section. Oh, let's go back. Right away he says, how do we return him? It's interesting. This is his answer. Did anyone rob God? Yes, you are robbing me. But you say, how do we rob you? This is, these are interesting people. <laughs> <laughs> right? They're challenging. How do we rob you? You shouldn't ask because you, you, they should have found out by now God's going to tell them. <laughs> right? If you really don't want to know, don't ask. Right? But they ask, how do we rob you? And then he says in tithes, tithes and offerings. You're a curse with a curse. You're robbing me. The entire nation of you. So this is not just a small thing. Bring, in, bring the whole tithe into the storehouses so that there may be food in my house. And put me to the test. Now in this, says the Lord of armies, if I do not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you blessing until it overflows, then I will rebuke the devourer for you, so that I will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor will the vine of the field prove fruitless to you, says the Lord of hosts. All the nations will call you blessed, for you will be delightful. You will be a delightful land, says the Lord of armies. So here, what's happening is the uh, people are not bringing in the total tithes, right? They're not maybe bringing the best tithes. They're not bringing the best. What was the Lord told them in, in, the, in, in, in Deuteronomy and so forth? They need to be the first fruits. You need to bring 10%, right? The highest, the top 10%, not the low 10%. The count of money, well, here's a, you know, $1 to me, $1 to me, $1 to me, $1 to me, get up to whatever, hundred dollars, and you say, here's ten dollars to the Lord, I'm going to use this, but this is the best, right? This is for me, and I go spend my money that maybe I'll offer. No, we should give the top. We should give the best. But they weren't doing that, right? This is how you rob me, right? This is what you're doing. You want to return to me? Take care of me. Offer what you say, right? You say, all this, you know, all you give it all to me, all to Jesus, I surrender. Well, you want to give me part of it. I want more, right? <laughs> this is the, the principle. Then he says, look, look at this. If you bring the storehouse, bring the tithes into the storehouse so they may be food in my house. You're putting, you, you just, what, try it. Put me to the test, right? What is he going to do? If you do this, look at what he's going to do. Wow. You do not open for you. I will open windows for you. See, I'll, I'll pour out my blessing upon you. Right? Everything you want, I'll pour out upon you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and these things will be added unto you. When you think about your Christian life, I think about mine. I, have, I do admit, the more I've given to the Lord, the more I've experienced His blessing. Yeah. <clears throat> Even, you know, humanly, right? Practically, but also Maybe spiritually, right? The more I give, the more he can pour in. The more I give out, the more he can give. And truly, this is a blessing. We want the church in Livonia to be blessed, right? We ask, Lord, where's your blessing? Well, certainly there's difficulties and things we need to struggle through. But the real blessing is, is when his people offer themselves unto him and give them unto him. Then he says, eventually, he will rebuke the devourer. 
So that it will, he will not destroy it. He didn't he'll deal with the enemy. He'll deal with all the things that come in. Let him bring in this judgment. And then it says, all the nations will call you blessed. Right? For you will be a delightful land. Lord, may the church be delightful unto you. Yeah. This is for Proverbs. Ed, can you read Proverbs 3, 9 at the bottom? Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your books. That was one more. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Amen. Honor the Lord from your wealth and from first and from the first of all your produce. Then one. Your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with me. This is where I like to talk read this verse. Uh oh. Okay. Slides empty. Oh, ah, there, there, there. Okay. Uh -huh. If you notice the last quote from me, I changed the line. Oh. The song says, Let thy blessing fall upon me. Oh. I changed it to let the blessing flow from me. It's not that it shouldn't, but listen. Let's read this together. Oh, Jesus, I surrender. Lord, I give myself to thee. Fill me with thy love and power. Let thy blessing go through me. Amen. Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first fruit of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty. Your vats will overflow with new wine. This is why I brought this song up. Oh. Right. To the people in the time of Malachi, the, offering they, the offerings they were given were, I should say outward offerings, but it was what was in their heart. It was their produce, you know, the fruits, their vegetables, their silver, their gold, the top things they were giving. They were asked to give 10% of the best, right? When we come to the New Testament, it should be all oh, the Jesus I surrender. God gives us everything. But he also allows us to use as stewards for our needs. <laughs> but his goal is, all to Jesus I surrender. Lord, I give myself to thee. So it's not just a matter of your, your offering to the church financially, yes. Church has needs, building has to take care of. You know, the servants of the Lord, the gospel, the ministry. Those things need to be taken care of. But in the Lord, it's not only that, it's also our spiritual service. It's the portion that God has given each one of us, whatever that might be, whether it's taking care of the orphans, taking care of the needy, preaching the gospel, um, carrying a Bible study, having a home gathering, ministering to the sick, right? Caring for one another, just loving one another. All these things are all. Then it's fill me with thy love and power. Let thy blessings flow through me. Amen. May our vats be filled. <laughs> May our dishes be filled. May things overflow. May the church life be a place where we see the full blessings of the Lord coming in. I don't think I'm going to be able to finish today. Um, but I would just like to again encourage us that the Lord loves us. He cares for us. And this is what he's sharing in the first part of Malachi chapter 3. He's not giving up. Even though there's 430 years of silence, that's nothing compared to what we've been. It's been 2,020 some years since the Lord came. And here we are, 2,020 some years later, still waiting for the Lord's return. Still hoping for the Lord's return. I think for this, I'm going to go just to the last slide. We will use it next week, but I think we should declare the last slide together. I think this is good. I'm not sure how far we need to go. Oh, there we go. We're going to be going there anyway. There you go. That's it. Oh, 
false heart of heaven. All right, we use this verse today. But let's just, we'll use that again, but let's, well, let's, let's read Titus 2.11. Let me read this to you, and we'll come back to this. But, you know, this struck me, this, this section of verses struck me probably about three years ago. Mm. I was reading this, and then I never, because we talk a lot about grace. We're saved by grace. Mm. Grace is God's love coming to us. Grace is God coming to us in Christ, right? Which is true. God is coming to us in this way. But have you ever heard the definition of grace this way? Mm. Listen to this. But grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people. And what is grace doing? Instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires and to live sensibly, righteously, in a godly manner in this present age. You know grace is teaching you to be kind and godly, so it's just grace. Praise God, I'm saved by grace. You know, all sufficient grace. Yes, it is all sufficient. But, you know, they have just, what do they call that, that message that preached now? Grace. Super grace. Or Super hyper, grace or hyper grace. Yeah, hyper grace. Don't worry about it. It's all grace. It's all grace. But grace is also a teacher. <laughs> it's teaching us to deny in God and its worldly desires, to live sensibly, righteously, in a godly manner in this present age. Grace comes. Every day, even in your trials and troubles, reason, one hand, refine away, burn the unrighteous, ungodly things, and to produce the gold and silver. And what, what are we doing? We're looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the glory of our God and Savior, Christ Jesus, who gave himself to redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself a people for his possession. Eager for good works. Now let's declare the last verses together. The Spirit, Spirit and the bride say, Come! And let the one who hears say, Come! And let the one who is thirsty, Come! And let the one who desires take the water of life without cost. He who testifies these things says, Yes. yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. amen. On Lord Jesus. Let's read that last phrase again. I'm starting with amen. 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 On Lord Jesus. <laughs> amen. All right. Well, we can spend a few minutes if someone would like to testify. Um, we can decide whether we want to finish that message next week or well, next week. Yeah, just so we know, yeah. I'll just, it'll be in the announcements next week. Um, it's going to be a um, joint meeting, uh, but it will be a little bit different. We're having three brothers come to visit from Cleveland, Paul Niter, Rex Beck, and Stephen Chu. Most of you know Stephen Chu. He's been with us. He's shared in the meeting before. Um, and then some of you might know Paul Niter. He's been here at Rex Beck. You might, some of you might know him, but they're going to be visiting and spending couple days fellowship with the brothers, but on Sunday morning, um, one or two or all three will give a message. I don't know what it will be, but that's what our um, joint meeting will be with the Chinese-speaking brothers and sisters. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. So what do we want to do next? Anybody else to share? Jesus. I just want to say this is, a, this is an amazing, amazing work we have. Um, uh, you mentioned something about sanctification before, before we were even saved, before the salvation happened. And um, I can recall a lot of these things in my life, but just and because of that, has kept me uh, to see the Lord in a full rich way. And the Lord brings you down. I know, I know you all have experience of that problem where it's kept you prior to you being, prior to you being saved. And a big one to me was a uh, failure, talking about failures, and uh, 
I, I dropped out of school mm. uh, because uh, after two years at, at Ohio State, it was too much for me. And then I went into and I went into the army. So that seemed like the uh, third of the theory in people's eyes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I, I didn't really fun, but I, I went. Yeah. Mm. Actually, to preserve, to me, a point average for the way I finish that word, I would have been in mm. So, uh, in this service, that we to go to the army and then to uh, go to Obinawa. We're we're to see the Lord. So all all these things, I mean, the Lord has created created prior to us being uh, saved in you know, which way he is made. And uh, so uh, never happened if I would have uh, so called finished school or whatever, I would have been lost. I had to get out of the environment of the uh, were saying to me, it's safe to go. So the Lord really decided to find us prior to us being saved. And I think our experiences. I was touched about this. The Lord says, uh, prove me. Prove me. But when he says, if you offer me, yes. prove me. Yeah, prove me. Yeah. That means when you offer to the Lord, you also get more faith. Because the Lord, you experience the Lord yes. taking care of you. Yes. And it, it, it makes some real solid faith. And yes. you know the Lord more. And yes. your faith is stronger. Right. Amen. We can go to we can go to the announcements. Do I have it? Or? Yeah. 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 No, they'll have to put it off. Then. Oh. Anybody like to? Well, we can go down to the house and get some prayer. Oh, we're going to get that right. Bigger. Okay, we have our church prayer meeting Tuesday, 7 8 30 on Zoom. Then there's an Ecclesiastes Bible study. At Nancy's house, seven to eight thirty. That's uh, both in person and on Zoom. And then uh, our our joint meeting is next week, the October sixteenth. And uh, those three brothers from Please October tenth. Yeah. It's October tenth. Oh, it's October tenth. Yeah, yeah. 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 I just don't know. I was. Yeah, you got messed up when you got sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got sick this week and I, met, I got confused in a lot of things. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's it's this next Sunday, yeah, back to the 10th. And then uh, we'll show you the flyer update here. One more time. Oh, sorry. You got it. Oh, okay. So, uh, I've just uh, done a little little bit more, but you see that uh, area to the far uh, left, that's uh, Madonna College is done, and then all uh, about, I would say, maybe about half of, of St. Mary's Hospital. You get rid of a lot of tracks fast in those parts. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot. And everyone, oh well, in, uh, in the hospital, most everyone is nice. And, and, uh, in the college, everyone was nice. And I uh, also did a little more on the east side of, of there. That's uh, east of Middle Belt. It just was a little bit more. Also did some in Dearborn, too. Wow. Uh, we're uh, between Outer Drive and Telegraph. It's the West Carolina. 
West Dearborn, yeah, West Dearborn. Yeah. Amen. Maybe we can ask some prayer. Amen. Lord, thank you for this morning. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you for speaking through your word, Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, it's not always easy to be refined in the fire. Mm -hmm. Lord, we appreciate your love towards us, Lord. Amen. Lord, you have a view and a purpose to gain us wholly for you. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Amen. Lord, uh, help us and enable us, Lord, Amen. to give Amen. all to you. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you. This is your work, the work of the Holy Spirit. The one Amen. that refines us. Not our work, but you. The Holy Spirit refines us. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, Lord. Lord, uh, thank you. It's such a, a pleasure to serve you, Lord. Amen. Yes. It's such Amen. a privilege to give all to you, Lord. Amen. 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 Lord, let your blessing flow through us. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord.
Yeah.